Ya Allah.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sorry for the inconvenience once again. We are so sorry that things didn't work as planned. But God has come through. So praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I just want to welcome all of our guests, all of our members. As we prepare to serve you this morning, we are so grateful to be a part of this family of Christians. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't have it any other way. I would have it any other way. I am a blessed man to have two wonderful congregations to serve. I am blessed beyond measure. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome any guests that are here for the first time. I pray that your experience with us would be one that uh, unfortunately you'll forget the bad and concentrate on the good. The Lord has put a word in the mouth of our dear brother, Brother uh, O'Neill Bryson, and so we're looking forward to hearing the word. But before we get to the preach word, we're going to have the song word. We're going to pray. We're going to we're going to have a children's story. We're going to have church this morning. Is that all right? I think so. I think that's going to be okay. Sister Gwen, well, let's let's go through some announcements this morning. Are you ready for those announcements? There we go. All right. I just welcome everyone. Just welcome everyone. I just want to have a short word of prayer. Just hold it right there, Sister Gwen. Gracious Father in heaven, come by here, O Lord. May your Holy Spirit attend to this place. Be with us now as we worship you. We're off to a, a rough start this morning. But you know, Lord, this is about you. It's not about us. This is all about you. So, Father, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, we're inviting the Holy Spirit to come and take control of us. May we see Jesus and him uplifted and glorified today is our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Once again, welcome, my friends. Welcome. Just a few announcements. Just a few. First, SDA Church of Evingston. Listen up. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we're going to have a church board meeting via Zoom, July 26th. What did I say for all the board members? We're going to have a church board meeting tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., July 26th. And it's very important that all church board members attend. Very important. Very important. I just want to remind you that I just want to Thank you, not remind you, thank you for your faithfulness in your tithe and offering this time while we're in this pandemic. You guys have been faithful beyond your, our imagination. You have been faithful servants of the Most High God. And I, for one, am so glad, so happy for your faithfulness. So once again, we are, we are, uh, I'm here to let you know that we, uh, just, re, you know, return your tithe and give a faithful offering as the Lord has prospered you throughout the week and throughout the month. For those of you who are having trouble getting your tithe and offerings to the church, uh, please contact the clerk of each church. And you can even contact me and we'll make arrangements so that you can get your, um, so that you can get your information, I mean, your, your tithes and offerings in. Uh, on time at your convenience, okay? We're just here to serve you. We're here to serve you. Some of you are aware we had to uh, close down the church here recently, uh, First Seventh Avenue Church of Evanston. We had to shut it down temporarily, but we will not be down forever. Amen? So at the appointed time when the Holy Spirit said go, we need to be ready to go, and then once again inhabit the house of the Lord and bring your praise, bring your praise. What did I say? Bring your praise with you, for we're going to be having ourselves a good time praising our Lord and our Savior. We're going to sing a medley of I Love You, Lord, today, and there is none like you, and I invite you to sing along. Today, because 
you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Sing it again. Tell him you love him. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you and lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart with praise my heart my heart my mind my soul belongs to you you paid the price for me way back on Calvary that's why I praise you Lord I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary, we praise you, Lord. We lift you up and we magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, Lord. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart, heart is filled with praise, with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and to find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and to find there is none. Eternity, Lord, and 
to find there is none. Oh, there is none to find there is none. Oh, there is none to find there is none to find. I knew he was spending a lot of Good morning and happy Sabbath. Let's pray with me as we enter into the presence of our Lord. Heavenly Father, as we enter into your presence, I pray at this time that your Holy Spirit will come and be with us. Be with us, Lord, so that we can worship you in truth this morning, O oh God. As we enter into your presence, O oh Lord, prepare our hearts so that we can hear from you today, O oh God. Father, we need you now more than ever. So be with us, encourage our hearts, O oh God. And when this is all said and done, we will say it was a good thing for us to be in your presence this morning. These are the mercy we ask in your son's name. Amen. Good morning, saints. Happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 42. And it reads, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, unto the day that Noah entered into the ark. And know not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. May the Lord add his richest blessings to the reading of his holy word. Have a happy Sabbath. We Boys and girls, this is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called The Woman at the Well. Today's memory verse is from Luke chapter 8, verse 39. It says, Tell how much God has done for you. 
The message for today's story is we help others when we tell them about Jesus. Have you ever been thirsty? So thirsty you couldn't wait to get a drink? One day when he was traveling, Jesus became very thirsty. Would someone get him a drink? Jesus sat beside the well in the middle of the day. He was very thirsty. He was hungry too. His disciple friends had gone into the town to buy food, but Jesus had decided to sit by the well to rest. Jesus did not have a bucket with a rope tied on it, so he did not have any way to reach any of that nice, cool water in the well. Maybe someone would come to get water from the well and offer him a drink. Around lunchtime, a woman came to the well, and she had a water jug. She was going to get some water. Jesus looked at her, and he knew that she was a Samaritan. Jesus knew that the people of Samaria did not like Jews, and Jews did not like Samaritans. Jesus was a Jew, but he liked Samaritans. In fact, he liked people of every country. Jesus knew that the woman would not speak to him. She would not speak to a Jew. So Jesus spoke to her instead. May I please have a drink of water? <gasps> the woman was very surprised. You are a Jew, she said, and you are talking to me? You know that I am a Samaritan. That's right, Jesus said with a smile. Then he began to talk to the woman. She was so interested in what Jesus was saying that she forgot to get him a drink. Jesus knew that the woman had troubles. He knew that people did not like her very much, but that did not matter to Jesus. He loved everybody. Although he was tired and thirsty, Jesus could see that the woman needed to know about God's love. He wanted to help her even more than he wanted a drink of water. As they talked, the woman told Jesus that she knew God had promised that a Savior would come and help people understand about him. Then Jesus surprised her. He said, I am that Savior. The woman was so happy. Jesus was the Savior and he was her friend. Quickly she left her water jug and ran back into the town. She wanted to tell other people about Jesus. It did not take long for people to gather at the well. They listened to his stories and invited him to stay with them. For two days, Jesus stayed and told the people about God's love. Jesus loves and helps all people. It doesn't matter to him where they come from or what they look like. Everyone needs to know about Jesus. You can help by telling others about God's love. You can be loving just like Jesus. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio El Piso in Singapore. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Happy Sabbath to everyone. This is Offering Time. It is said, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Generosity is a spiritual value. As we prepare to give our offering, may we not just look into our wallets or checkbooks to see what we have, but let us also look in our hearts and see what's available there. How much love? How much generosity? How much faith? How much gratitude? How much hope? And let us take our offering from that account. As we grow more generous in spirit and in action to support the work of the gospel, let us also increase love and justice, expand kindness and compassion, and let us also give ourselves to God as an offering of gratitude and love. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for another beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you for the many blessings bestowed upon us. Please bless the offerings received. 
May we continue to cheerfully give, remembering that everything we have truly belongs to you. Thank you for being our provider and sustainer. Bless and multiply our efforts. Keep us faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath, saints. We're getting ready to have our intercessory prayer. So I would ask that every heart be praying unto God, everybody's eyes closed, every head bowed. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we're so grateful to you for your love, your mercy, and your grace unto us. We thank you, Father, for loving us so much. Father, we know that you love us so much that we can scarcely tell it all. Father, we want to take this time to come before you and, and cast our cares and concerns upon you, Father, because we know we serve a great big God with great big shoulders who has told us that we should carry our burdens to him. So, Father, in a very special way, we have these situations that we want to give to you, Father, because you're the best of what we have, and we know that you can take care of them, Father. So, Father, we ask that you look in on the sick and the shut-in. Father, we're praying for those individuals who are in hospitals, nursing homes, penal institutions, hospital ICUs, emergency rooms. Father, we pray for all the individuals who are stricken with illness, Father, we pray for all those individuals who are suffering through COVID-19. We ask, Father, in a special way that you would heal them. Father, we know that you have the victory over all illness, Father, and we claim by faith your deliverance for all of these individuals who are stricken with this disease, young, old, female, male. Father, saved, unsaved, we pray for a mighty blessing in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Father, we want to remember those individuals who stand in need of a financial blessing from you. Father, we pray for those individuals who stand in need of a healing touch from you. And Father, we stand in need of those individuals who are looking for jobs. We pray for them, Father. Father, we pray that you bind every broken heart and that you lift up every bowed down head, Father. We pray for those individuals who are suffering the loss of loved ones. We pray for those individuals, Father, who are concerned about providing for their families and for watching over their children. Father, we pray for the children who are being coerced into going back into these schools that may or may not be healthy, Father. So all we can do, Father, is cast those concerns upon you and, and pray that your will be done, your perfect will, Father. And Father, we ask that you bless our churches, the Evanston Seventh-day Adventist Church and All Nations Fellowship Church, Father. Bless our pastor. Bless all the family members and friends, Father. And Father, we pray that you bless any and everyone who is watching this, that you bless them with what they stand in need of. Grant them the desires of their heart according to your perfect will, Father. And Father, we ask it done by faith in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And if I can make a special request, it is mightily important that when you go on your knees tonight, say those individuals who mean something to you by name. Go the extra mile. Corporate prayers are great, but go the extra mile. Tell God about someone who really means something to you by their name. In the mighty name of, your, uh, of his son, Jesus. You guys enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Amen.
everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We thank you for joining us today for worship. Last time we were here, we preached about preaching. What about preaching? And so this time we're going to do part two, and we are happy. Thank God for the opportunity to stand before you another time and to to minister the word of God. I pray that this word will go out with power and with clarity, and that God's spirit might be with us. I want to tell you a story, but I also want you to find in your Bibles the book of Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter twenty. And while you're searching for that, I'm going to tell you a little story that happened to me. It was a few months ago when when I had some very huge biceps and, and everybody was looking at me and everybody was envious at, at those huge biceps. But one of my friends who was very observant, she said, do you realize that the right one is bigger than the left one? And when I examined it, I had a huge lump growing on top of my right bicep. And she encouraged me and she said, you need to go to the doctor just in case it is cancer so they can start the treatment and you have a better chance of survival. So I went to my primary care doctor and he sent me to an orthopedic surgeon. And he did an x-ray and when he did the x-ray, he said, Mr. Bryson, I, I don't see anything. So I need to do an MRI. And so he did an MRI but then the results came back and he says, I can't see nothing. And so he ordered an MRI with contrast. The results were concerning to him, so that he said that I needed to call this doctor at this university hospital. I needed to go and see him urgently. And so I called the university hospital and they said, you know what, Mr. Bryce, we don't take your insurance. So I called another university hospital and I make arrangement to go and see the doctor. And when I went down there, the doctor take one look at my arm and she hold it up like this and she says, this is not cancer. However, I'm going to do a biopsy just to make sure. My friend said, what did the doctor say? I need to hear what the doctor said. So I was telling her. And she said, if the doctor calls you first thing in the morning or super early, guarantee you have cancer. But if she waits until evening or she waits a couple days, then you're fine. It might have been two days after, at about 6.30, my phone rang. And I took up my phone and I looked at it and it says, Dr. So-and-so, what would you do? Would you answer the call such an early time knowing that you could be at the brink of being diagnosed with cancer? Would you answer that call? And so today as we look at preaching about what? We're going to look at aspects of the Bible where, where we can see how God is calling us to, to, to look in the Bible and to look at the signs of the time. And so as we get in the Word, I'm going to invite you to, to stand and show you respect for the Word of God as we read from 2 Kings, the book of 2 Kings chapter 20, 2 Kings chapter 20, and I'll be reading from verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, in those days Hezekiah was sick unto, up to sick unto death. The prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order. For you shall die and not live. Then he turned his face towards the wall. And he started to pray saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked with thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. The Bible said, and, and Hezekiah wept. Sir, I don't know about you getting such a diagnosis, but we could sympathize and we could see with him. He wept sore. And verse 4 says, came to pass that before Isaiah was gone out in the midst of the court, that the word of God came to him saying. And I want to know more of this. Verse 5 says, he says, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, and I wanted to underline the word captain, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, 
The Bible says, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. And behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thee fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake, for the servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Turn, take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Let us pray, Father in heaven. Another time, O oh God, I stand before your people to declare your word. Father, I confess my faults. I pray, God, that you may use me today in a way that you have never used me before. Loving Father, break down the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside thy sea, beyond thy sacred page, I seek thee, Lord. Thou art the sound says, Spirit and life, they are words thou dost give. I hasten to obey when thou art me. But I am weak, God. I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou, O oh God, withdraw thyself from me, O oh, whether shall I go? Be with your word, O oh God. Be with your people today as we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. So the last time I was here, I told you how, how news go around really quickly. And, but this time, the news that, that Ezekiah was getting was not good. It's not the type of news that anybody wants to hear. When sickness touches your body, our first inclination is to call on the doctor instead of crying out to the great physician. See, I like the songwriter who said that the great physician now is there, the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping hearts to cheer. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. When we find ourselves in trouble, instead of running to, to the great physician, we run to the doctors first. When we find ourselves in trouble, we look to the pastor, we look to our friends, we look to all the psychiatrists and all of that, instead of looking to the hills from whence cometh my help. The songwriter says, my help cometh from the Lord, the God who makes heaven and earth. And so now we find Ezekiah with a born that, that no doubt, and, and I told you early on to underline the fact that Ezekiah was no ordinary man. Ezekiah will never go to a doctor and hear that we don't take your insurance because the Bible tells us that, that Ezekiah was captain. He was a powerful man and so he had all the access to, to all the technology that was afforded in that time. Ezekiah was no common man. But now he finds himself, Ezekiah finds himself in a place where the antibiotic and the ointment is not working. He finds himself in a place where the injection and the radiation and, and, and the proton therapy and all the bush medicines is not working. And so now the man of God showed up. And you would want to think that all right, I am a man of God. I am serving you, God. I'm doing all the things that I should do. Thank you so much, Jesus, for sending your prophet. But when Isaiah showed up, the message was not good. The message was not what he expect. The news was not good. He said, Isaiah said, this sickness, this boil is going to take you to your grave. This situation that you're going through, there is no resolution to it. Set your house in order. It's, oh God, is that a message for somebody today? To set your house in order. Because this thing that you're going through, there is no resolution to it. You see, brothers and sisters, it's one thing when the doctors say that everything is, is done. We've done everything we could. I'm so sorry, Mr. We've tried everything we could. You got to go. Set your house in order. 
The situation you're going through, it's not done. It won't be resolved. I feel like I'm talking to somebody today. Like your marriage, you've gone to counselors after counselors, but he still said, I want a divorce. Maybe you left from this doctor to the other doctor, and they said, you know what, I'm so sorry. We've done everything we could. We've tried all that we could. Set your house in order. It's a message that a man of God brought. You're going to die. In other places, you're going to kick the bucket. You see, I, you see, when I sit and I thought about, like, as a Christian of God and the things that some Christian goes through, you never smoke a day in your life, but all of a sudden you end up with lung cancer. You eat all the tofu and all the veggies all your life. You exercise, you rest, you keep the Sabbath, but yet you're ending up with the same sicknesses as all the people who drink and, and smoke and do all of that. But yet, yet I look at it that this is a blessing. If you should hear from the doctor that you're going to die in six months, that is a blessing. Because now you have a chance to set your house in order. It is a blessing when God can say to you, set your house in order. It's not a new to want to hear. But when but, but setting your house in order, now you have a time to repent and to turn from your wicked ways. Can I tell you that there are millions of people who put on their clothes and brush their teeth and eat their breakfast or all the order? And they go all expecting to come back and they never return. So when you get that message to set your house in order, it is a blessing from God. Are you listening to me? It's a, it's a, it takes a whole different level of faith. See, when, when the doctors give up on you, Sometimes you say, you know what, I want a second opinion. But when the message is coming from God, set your house in all the year that die, it takes a whole different level of faith. And I want you to look what, what Hezekiah did. Instead of cursing the messenger, which is what a lot of us like to do, or discrediting the messenger, he turned his face towards the wall. And can you imagine? He began to pray and he began to cry out. The Bible says that Ezekiel said in verse 3, I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember how I have walked before thee in truth and in a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. The Bible said Ezekiel wept sore. I, I see the faces of people when they're told that you have this cancer and you're not going to make it. This cancer has metastasized and, and it's going to take you over. I have seen the faces. It is not a comforting thing to think that you're going to die. And this was what Hezekiah was facing. But I want you to notice that he refused to accept Oh, praise the Lord. He refused to accept this. And Ezekiel began to pray. Because, you see, there's one thing that Ezekiel knows that a lot of us don't know. Is that God can change any situation. Are you listening to me, everybody? You see, I grew up on the impression thinking that God was this big, strict, moral God. You know, you know some fathers that are just strict? It's like, man, you have to be back here by 8. I mean, you have to be there by 8. And so I was under the impression growing up that God was a strict dictator and that everything he said is fixed, is sedentary, and that there's no negotiation with God. But you see, the more I study the Bible, the more I understand the character of God. So I've always heard that God never changes. And, and in fact, I can be honest, he does not change. It's because we don't understand the nature of God. It's that God will adjust the situation if you only call to him. God has always been a loving and caring father. He's always been a God who's going to try to reach out to you despite what the doctor says, despite 
Hebrews 4 verse 15 says, For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But in all points was tempted like we were. The Bible says, yet without sin. That's the God we serve. The God we serve is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. The God who we serve, he sees your pain and he hears your cry. Sometimes when we come into the church and people see how our happy smiling face and they don't know what we're going through. Can I tell you that God sees the suffering. God sees the pain. He sees the hurt. And so how many remember when man sinned? It was God who, who, who in the midst of in the beginning of life provided a lamb. And this lamb was supposed to represent the day when Jesus was going to come and gave his life, laid on his life on a rugged cross just to bring us back into the fold. What a merciful and a loving father. What a loving God. Oh, praise God. Father, I just so love you. You're so gracious. You're so awesome, oh God. Thank you so much for your, for your, for your loving kindness towards us. I like when Psalm 8, Psalm 108, verse 8, he said that the Lord is merciful and gracious, abounding in mercy. You know what abounding means? It's continual. There's just so much mercy upon mercy. We can't exhaust the mercies of God. Don't care how we try, we can't exhaust the mercies of God. He's going to try to find us. The song that we saw earlier said that we're living in a grand and awful time. But yet more and more we can see the mercies of God. And that is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, he said, if my people, who are my people? Who are my people? If my people who are called by my name, if they should just humble themselves, humble themselves and pray and seek my face, God said that he will turn, he will turn, and the people turn from their wicked way. He said, I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and will heal their lands. That is just simple. When we look at what is going on around us, if my people... If my people, people who are called by my name, if we will just humble ourselves and pray, if we will just humble ourselves and seek the face of God, if we will just turn from our wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven and will heal our land. Hezekiah refused to accept defeat. Hezekiah, even while he was coming from the man of God, he had enough faith that God can turn around that situation. And how do we say God doesn't change? If Hezekiah was going to die and all of a sudden, God, he, he ended up after praying, getting 15 more years. How do we say God doesn't change? You see, we talked about the nature of God. That God has never changed because it's always been that loving and forgiving Father. And He tries to accommodate us if we just ask. How do you say God doesn't change, Brother Onion? How many of you remember when Moses went up on the mountain on Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments? Moses was up there for a while, and the people were wondering, Where is Moses? Where is Moses? And they began to get reckless and, and, and all of a sudden they took off their golds and their chains and all of that and, and they gave it to Aaron and he built a calf, a golden calf. And he says, look, this is the God that brought you out of Israel. And the people started worshiping the calf. After all that God had done for them, then they turned their back on God and started to worship idol. And the Bible said this, this pleased God. And God said, I'm going to wipe them off the face of the earth. But Moses pleaded with God. Moses reminded God that he's, he's a God of love and mercy. And the Bible says 
in Exodus 32, verse 14, he says, And the Lord, you know what? He changed his mind about the disaster. I'm telling you that if we pray, we have so much power in praying. If we pray, then we can change the disaster that is upon us. If we pray, we can change that we have a child who is turned away. If we pray, we can change that marriage that is about to end. Mm-hmm. How do you say God doesn't change by the price? Well, ask Jonah. Jonah was, was preaching to the people of Nineveh because they were so wicked. And the wickedness of reach to, to, to the God where, where God threatened that he's going to wipe them out if they don't repent. And the Bible says in Jonah 3 that the God saw their works and he turned from the evil. Why? Because Jonah interceded on their behalf. The Bible says that God relented from the disaster that he said he would bring upon them. And he did not bring it up. Later on, in verse 4 of Jonah, chap- in chapter 4 of Jonah, verse 2, when Jonah was praying, and I wanted to know this prayer, he said, And Lord, was not this that I said that I was still in my country? Therefore I fled to Tarshish, for I know that thou art a God. He says, For I know that thou art gracious and a merciful one of God we serve, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. One who relents from doing harm. How do you say God doesn't change, brother, on the earth? In Ark Samuel, when the angels stretched out their hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, and when God see the level of destruction, the Bible said that God said, it's enough. Relax your hand. How many of us would want, want a relaxing when we look at the things, the many things that we have to deal with a relaxing? God said it is enough. The Bible says that the angels of the Lord was by the threshold, threshing floor. How do you say God doesn't change, brother on here? It was at that wedding feast. When Jesus was pretty young and, the, and the, the wine was out. And so Mary, the mother of God, she, she went to him and he said, Jesus, the wine is finished. And I wanted to notice the response that Jesus gave to her. He said, my time is not yet come. But I wanted to look at the faith of Mary because she knew the nature of God. She knew that God is touched with her feelings. He know that God understands her every being. And so she said to the servant, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Mm-hmm. Whatever he tells you, even though it's not his time, he said it's not my time, but yet God is not going to allow the people to have an embarrassment. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but, but it's almost like God is telling you to tell that whatever he tells you to do, do it. I don't know if someone is having a problem with your stomach and God is saying, just put your hand on your stomach and claim the healing in Jesus' name. I don't know, but he just, he said, whatever he told you to do, just do it. How do you say that God has not changed? And that there is no negotiation with God? When we remember in Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was preaching and the people were so wicked and they refused to turn. And so Abraham was interceding on their behalf with God. And it reached to the point where he pleaded with God and said, if you find 50 righteous, just imagine, just if you could just find 50 righteous in the city, would you save them? And he said, perhaps if you find 45, they couldn't find 45. Perhaps if you could find 40, they couldn't find 40. Perhaps if you could find 30, 20, and 10. What a merciful God. One songwriter said, Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. That's the God we serve. See, I remember one summer there was a church, and I think it was Laura and her sister, they sang the song. And 
it was the first time I'm hearing the sound, and, and the sound just keep coming to me. It's, it's those like this. It's all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I was talking to my wife, and I was like, reckless love of God. But the more I look at it, for God to, 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 to love even me, oh God, and to take chances with me, it's an overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It's going to reach down to somewhere that says, oh, it chased me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I don't know about you, but I don't deserve it. But you gave yourself away. Mm -hmm. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I'm telling you that God will never, He loves us so much that He will never bring destruction unless He gives the word of warning. Can I say that again? That God will never bring destruction unless He sends out a word of warning. How many of you know that's why He sends preachers and teachers and and Prophets. Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says, How shall they hear without a preacher? What are you saying, Brother O'Neill? I am saying that God has sent preachers, the sending of people to preach to you is a blessing. It's a blessing from God because God is going to send, He's not going to send in destruction unless He sends somebody to explain to you the series of events that is to come. See, I, I know of this, this person who God has sent to, to ministry. This person could have been out there making so much money as an engineer, dealing with, with, with machines and all of that, because I don't know about you, Virgin, but it's so hard to deal with people. Some people would rather deal with machines and all of that, because machines are not going to argue. <laughs> but, but, but God has put this man in this field, and, and when you look one year ago, I did many things that is coming at him in many ways. The devil tried to stop him, the problems, the trials, the tribulations. How many of you know that is why it is important to pray for our pastors? How many of you know that the devil is not going to stop because the devil doesn't like people who stand up for truth and justice? Who stand up for the word of God? And so after preaching and preaching for years, the people refused to listen. Isaiah preached for years and the people were not, I don't know, he was getting frustrated or what. But, but the word of God came to Isaiah in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. And the Bible says in, in, in verse 1, cry aloud, spear not, lift up the voice like a trumpet. He said, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. What are you saying? See, I know some people don't like the long preaching. I know some people even don't like the long preaching. But, but what God was saying to Isaiah, lift up your voice like a trumpet. See, I don't know any trumpet that's quiet. But not just that, show my people their transgression. I told you earlier to underline my people. What I get from that is that there are people in the church that need to see that the way they're living is not right. Cry aloud! Spear not! In other words, you can't talk about certain things and leave the others because all of them are sin. He said, spear not! Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. How do you say that God doesn't change? Well, when I look at Noah, Noah was preaching for years. And he was telling people that God is going to destroy the earth with a flood. But people refused to listen. I can see Noah building a huge ark. And people laughing at him and refused to listen to the word of the preacher. But until the day when, when the rains began to fall, and the Bible said that the rain fell for 40 days, the underground water sources burst, and water started to pour on the earth. And the boat began to rise, the ark began to rise, and I 
to see. You see, to me, when I look at the ark, I look at God's mercy rising up. And there are men on the outside because they refuse to listen. It burns my heart to see parents who refuse to let their children turn their little heart to God. Because I have no doubt that when the, the boat was floating, there were children on the outside of the boat. There were two-year-old and two-month-old children that were, were losing their life because their parents refused to listen to the Word of God. How do we not get our children to Sabbath school? How do we not take the Bible and teach them to read and encourage them to invite God into their little hearts? You know, when, when, you know, when I think about it too, there was there is a bird, that I, I don't know if it is in America, but there's a bird in Jamaica. It has red hair, black feathers, and, and people don't like that bird. People don't even want that bird to fly over their house. You see, I don't, maybe over here they don't call it John Crow, they call it Vulture. But, but, but I can just imagine that there were a pair of John Crow going in the ark and men were on the outside. You know, at this we don't like pigs. But there was a pair of pigs going in the ark and man was on the outside because men refused to listen to the word of God. Can I tell you that the bird and the pig, they were created for a purpose and that was to clean the earth. They're not to be eaten. But man, how many of you know that man was not made to live outside of God? Mm. How many of you know that, that man were not made to be on the outside of the ark? It is unnatural to live in sin. Because God has provided, oh, you know what I was thinking about this last night, and I was saying how, how hard it is to lose your way because God is never going to give up on you. He'll never give up. He's going to try everything. And, and, and that is why on the, on the day when we sit and we go through the book, we're going to see how many times God tried, how many messages he sent to, to, to get you to turn your life to him and you refuse. And in the end, everybody's going to see that God is a just God. He was always just from the beginning. And even to the end, everybody is going to see that he's a just God. What should we preach about in a time like this when I believe that we're at the cusp of a major disaster? What do we preach about? It was John the Beloved, John the Beloved disciple of God. He was preaching and he was talking about Jesus and he didn't want to hear. And they said, John, I wanted to stop preaching about Jesus, but he continued to preach. And so we read where Empire Dominican, he ordered that John be dipped into a pot of boiling oil. And scholars agree that when he went in the oil and he came out, he came out preaching the word of God. Hmm. And, and so this emperor said, all right, Mr. John, since you like to preach to people, since you like to see church full until you get extra benches, since you like to hear people say amen and, and people worshiping God, I'm going to send you to a land where you're going to be there by yourself. Let's see who you're going to preach to now, Mr. John. And so John was banished to the Isle of Patmos. And you know, when I think about this pandemic and how some people are stuck in their homes with nobody to talk to, nobody to relate to, how hard it is for them. And just imagine John all by himself on this island. But God had a purpose for him. The angel of the Lord made John on the Isle of Patmos and he said, come up John, I got some things I need to show you. Come up higher. And so John, in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, he penned these words. John says, first one, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. And let me quick to point out that when the Bible talks about the four corners, the earth is not square. It's talking about the four cardinal points. But it's talking about from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. So the Bible said, I said, 
saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So it hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, that I have sealed the servants of God in their fight. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that we are at the stage in earth history where God is sealing people right now. We are at the stage of life in earth history where the angels are just holding back the wind of destruction, the wind of strife that is about to release on this earth. You see, the mercies of God is that God believes that there is one more person out there that needs to hear the word of God. They are holding back the wind of strife so that one more person can be saved. Time is being granted for God's servants to be sealed. Wind in prophecy means destruction. And so these, these angels are holding back the destruction that is about to be poured on the earth. Maybe that's just for you to be saved. I don't know if this is your last message, but, but I, I can just see the angels holding back the wind of strife so that you can be saved. The servant of God, Sister White says in the great controversy 614, it says that the angel of God ceased to hold in check the fierce winds of human passions. All the elements of strife will be loose. She will see the day when the angel of God release those winds. She said when they cease to hold it back, all the elements of strife will be let loose. Mm -hmm. I believe that we're on the brink. But the mercy of God is still holding back and every time we looked at the world and see they're shooting children in the face. When you look at what is happening in Chicago, we can see that God is holding back the wind of strife. When we look at what is happening around the world, we can see how God is holding back the winds of strife just so that you and I can be sealed. The songwriter said, we're living, we're dwelling in a grand and awful time. This is no ordinary time. Can't you see the signs around you? In an age or age telling to the living sublime, hard the waking of the nations, God my God to the free. Hard what sounded is creation groaning her lot of this. We can see the, the signs of the time, we can see creation groaning, and we know that we are in the last days. What will your answer be? Will you allow God to come into your life and to change you? Will you turn from, from, from sin and serve the true and living God? Can you see when we study prophecy the things that are happening around us? I believe that very soon we're going to reach to the point where we're going to be forced to worship on a day that God has not ordained for worship. And that is why the Bible talks about the sealing. Because if you, if, if you read in it, the Bible it says, Moreover, I gave them my what? My Sabbath. And this Sabbath is going to be a sign between what? Me and them. That they might know that I'm the Lord that sanctifies them. It is, it is, it is this, the keeping of God's Sabbath is going to be one of the final events. And when we look through the Ten Commandments, we can see that, that of all the Ten Commandments, there is only one that has all the attributes that a seal should have. You see, ancient kings, for their seal, it usually have their name. Ancient kings, their seal have their title, and it tells which territory they rule. And when we look at the, the fourth commandment, the, the Bible said, talks about the name, it says, for the Lord, your God, the fourth commandment said, what did he do? He is a creator. He, the title is that he's a creator. And his territory is that he, the Bible said that he made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in it. So when we 
signs of the time we realize that the keeping of God's seven day Sabbath is going to be one of the issues in the last day. God's final appeal before he returns is that we return to him. In Revelation 14 verse 7, he says, Say with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made the heaven and the earth, the seas and the springs of water. In the last days of earth history, it is who you worship is going to determine It's which day you worship. It's going to be who you worship. And, and a lot of people are going to be forced to worship different from what God has ordained. The seventh day Sabbath is God's eternal seal. It is the seal of his creative authority. And in the end, it is only those who have the seal of God. The Bible said, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving unto marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. Now I believe that we, we are just on the brink. And God is calling back his people to, to, to repentance. You see, I like, I like the words of this hymn as we come to a close. It says, come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy. And we talk about the streams of God's everlasting mercy. The songwriter said that God's mercy never ceases in calls for songs of loudest praise. He says, teach me some melodious son and song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, in the pine thy help I come, and I hope by God's good pleasure safely to arrive. Do you want to go home today? This is the part that I like. He said, Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fall of God, he to rescue me from danger. He imposed, interposed his precious love. Oh, to grace. How great a debtor. Daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter. By my wandering heart to be prone to wonder. That is our nature. I told you early on that, that we, it's unnatural for us to, to, to not follow God. So we are not this nature where we are prone to wonder. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. But this is the part that I want you to do. He says, here is my heart, Lord. Take and see. I told you that we're in the days of sealing. It's that the angels are ready to pour out the wind of destruction. But God is saying, because he's so loving and he's so merciful, he's just saying, hold on just a minute. Oh, little, little bit. Because there's somebody that needs to be sealed. Here is my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy course. Is that your prayer today? Don't take my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy course of love. Is that your prayer today? Is that your desire today? To be sealed for God's eternal and everlasting court. Here is my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for my course. I'm going to challenge you today to make a commitment in your heart that you want to follow the true and living God. To make a commitment in your heart. You want, is this your prayer today to say, Lord, take and seal my heart. Here is my heart. Take and seal. I want to go in the chat and to just type the word, here is my heart, Lord. Type the sentence, here is my heart, Lord. 
And you know, it's not like when you're in church where we can see you and you come up thinking that you can impress. This is now between you and God. Make that commitment in your heart. And go out to church and just type it. Here is my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Pastor is going to come in a few minutes and he's going to give you his contact. Email him. Maybe you need somebody to study with you. Maybe you need somebody to go through the Bible with you. Maybe you need somebody to pray with you. You have made that commitment. Just contact the pastor and he will pray with you and he will guide you in the right step. I want to invite you, brothers and sisters. Maybe you have been one who, who used to walk with God. But, but because you're so prone to wonder, you maybe have wandered away from the phone. And so God is calling you. God is holding by the wind of strife because he wants to save you. He's holding by the destruction that is about to come upon you because he wants to save you. And maybe you want to say, God, here is my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for like court of love. I don't know who this message is for today, but I just believe that there's somebody out there who just needs to say, Lord, here is my heart. Oh, take and seal it, Lord, for thy courts of love. Maybe I'm talking to somebody who have, you have never given your life to God. You've never trusted God with your life. And you want to say, Lord, here is my heart. I, I want to, a change in my life. I want it to take over my heart. I want it to use me, Lord. Here is my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for the course of all. Let's go in the chat. Go in the chat and type, here is my heart, Lord. And then what I wanted to do when Pastor gave all his contact, I wanted to contact him and to let him know the decision that you have made. Email him. Let him know that you have made a decision to give your heart to the Lord before it is eternally too late. Here is my heart, Lord. Go take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Father in heaven, I want to thank you once again for your word. Thank you so much, oh God, that you're such a loving and such a merciful God that even when we are bound to sickness and bound to death, your mercy, if we just cry out to you, your mercy can heal us and can restore us. Thank you, God, that even though we wander far from you because we're of the nature where we're prone to wonder, you reach down, oh God, because you're, you're everlasting, reckless love. You reach down, oh God, to save us. Thank you, Father, because you're such a loving God. Father, we praise you because you're such a loving God. But Lord, we're mindful of the fact that your love and your mercy, oh God, it, although they are here right now, one day, because you're a loving and a just God, you will have to judge us for the things that we have committed. Father God, that when we, we examine the boat, we will see how much time you have hold by the winds of destruction so that somebody might be saved. I pray, God, that you may speak to the heart of the stony heart right now, O oh God, that they may cry out to you, Jesus, and turn over their life before you. It is eternally too late. Thank you, O God, for the people who are worshipping with us, O God. Help us, O God, even to be faithful to you. As we make that recommitment, O God, as we give you our lives, O God, take it, Father, and seal it. Seal it for thy course. O Thank you, Father, for your loving kindness towards us. Thank you, God, that, that even though we have wondered, you still love us. You still find ways to reach to us. Father, we bless your name. We thank you. We adore you. We praise you and we thank you. As we give you thanks and we give you praise today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. We give you thanks. Amen. Amen.
Father in heaven, I want to thank you once again for your word. Thank you so much, oh God, that you're such a loving and such a merciful God. That even when we are bound to sickness and bound to death, your mercy, if we just cry out to you, your mercy can heal us and can restore us. Thank you, God, that even though we wander far from you because we're of the nature where we're prone to wonder, you reach down, oh God, because you're your everlasting, reckless love. You reach down, oh God, to save us. Thank you, Father, because you're such a loving God. Father, we praise you because you're such a loving God. But Lord, we're mindful of the fact that your love and your mercy, oh God, is, although they're here right now, one day, because you're a loving and a just God, you will have to judge us for the things that we have committed. Father God, that when we, we examine the boat, we will see how much time you have hold by the winds of destruction so that somebody might be saved. I pray, God, that you may speak to the heart of the stony heart right now, O oh God, that they may cry out to you, Jesus, and turn over their life before you. it is eternally too late. Thank you, O oh God, for the people who are worshipping with us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, even to be faithful to you. As we make that recommitment, O oh God, as we give you our lives, O oh God, take it, Father, and seal it. Seal it for thy course. Oh, thank you, Father. For your loving kindness towards us. Thank you God. That, that even though we have won. That you still love us. You still find ways to reach to us. Father we bless your name. We thank you. We adore you. We praise you and we thank you. As we give you thanks and we give you praise today. In the name of Jesus. Amen God. Bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. As we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and have our closing prayer now. Father, we thank you for the word preached. And though Satan has tried his best to keep this word from going forth, you have prevailed, dear Lord. Gracious Father, people are being weighed in the balances. Hearts are being weighed in the balances. Some people are standing at the crossroads trying to decide, can I trust Jesus with my life? Well, I'm here to tell you, you can do it. He'll take good care of you. Although the day is not going according to plan, our plan, it is going according to the God's plan. So, Father in heaven, for those who have decided that they want to follow Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit will come just now and inhabit their minds, inhabit their hearts. Work with them, O oh Lord. Bring them step by step to the cross and allow them to see Jesus Christ and him crucified and lifted up for the sins of the world. Save the people, O oh Father. There are many false doctrines out there right now that men and women, boys and girls are following and none of them are measuring up to the true doctrines of the scriptures. So give them a discernible spirit so they'll be able to understand what truth is. It is not defined by man, but truth is defined by you, O God. So help them to see truth as it is found in your son, Jesus Christ. Open their eyes, O Father. Open their minds so that they might see glimpses of you. As your manservant has been preaching, today is the day. Now is the time. And we stand at the gap. Lord, you stand at the gap waiting for us to make a decision. So somebody out there, somebody has heard the word. 
You need to make a decision today on whom you're going to follow. If it's going to be Christ Jesus, then follow him. Follow Jesus. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. May he who has called you also gift you with his Holy Spirit to live according to the words that are written in his Holy Scripture that you might be a witness for Jesus Christ to share his gospel with somebody while he's leading you. He could use us to be witnesses to somebody. Thank you, Lord, for the preach word. Thank you for the word that you put in the mouth of your servant. What a wonderful, wonderful word, dear Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, and all the people said, amen. Have a wonderful day, everybody.